Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about metabolism of phenylalanine. So without further ado, so let's begin with metabolism of phenylalanine, how it exactly goes into tyrosine. Phenylalanine, it has got alpha carbon, carboxyl group, amino group, CH2 and benzene ring. Now this phenylalanine, it is converted into tyrosine. So phenylalanine is a non-essential amino acid and tyrosine is a non-essential amino acid. So it means phenylalanine has to be converted into tyrosine. So that job is done by phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. So the job of this enzyme is very simple. So what it does is it is going to introduce hydroxyl group to phenylalanine and convert that phenylalanine into tyrosine. Now in order to add this hydroxyl group to phenylalanine, phenylalanine hydroxylase, it needs a coenzyme called tetrahydrobiopterin. Now this tetrahydrobiopterin here, so it is synthesized in limited quantities in our cells by guanosine triphosphate by multiple reactions that is shown here. Now the tetrahydrobiopterin which has got four protons here, so it is going to donate two protons to the reaction catalyzed by phenylalanine hydroxylase where molecular oxygen gets into the reaction released as H2O that is water molecule and it is introdu introducing hydroxyl group to aromatic ring to make phenylalanine. During this process, BH4 is converted into BH2 and that's basically oxidation of tetrahydrobiopterin into dihydrobiopterin. Now, since I told you the tetrahydrobiopterin is synthesized in limited quantities in our cells, it means dihydrobiopterin has to be reduced back into tetrahydrobiopterin and that job will be done by dihydrobiopterin reductase enzyme. DHPR is dihydrobiopterin reductase and this particular enzyme it's going to use a, a reduced molecule NADH plus H plus and release that as NAD plus. Like this with the help of phenylalanine hydroxylase and later dihydroteridine reductase, reductase enzyme you are going to convince our cells will be converting phenylalanine into tyrosine and thereby our cells will synthesize tyrosine that is why tyrosine is a semi-essential amino acid or it is a conditionally essential amino acid. It means we can synthesize tyrosine from phenylalanine as long as we have phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme and dihydroteridine reductase enzyme working. Now, if there is any mutation in a gene coding for phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme and that can give rise to a disease called classic phenylketonuria. And if there is a mutation in a gene coding for dihydroteridine reductase and that can give rise to malignant phenylalaninemia, sometimes we call refer this as non-classic phenylketonuria. I'm going to ref, uh, repeat it again. So defect in phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme, it will give rise to classic phenylketonuria and defect or deficiency in dihydroteridine reductase enzyme where it is not able to convert BH2 into BH4 that kind of phenylketonuria, we refer it as uh, non-classic phenylketonuria. In both classic phenylketonuria and non-classic phenylketonuria, as you can see, so there will be decreased in the conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine because phenylalanine hydroxylase, it is defective or if DHPR is defective, there will be shortage of BH4. So coenzyme for phenylalanine hydroxylase, that is BH4 is deficient it means phenylalanine conversion into tyrosine will also decrease. That will give rise to elevation of phenylalanine and this phenylalanine, it will get into alternate metabolic fate in our cells, getting converted into phenyl acetate, phenyl lactate, phenyl pyruvate. These are the ketone derivatives of phenylalanine and they will appear in the urine. That's why we call the disorder as phenyl ketonuria. Right. 
right so let me explain you what is phenyl ketonuria so phenyl ketonuria it is because of, so we have two kinds of phenyl ketonuria one is classic phenyl ketonuria other is a non classic phenyl ketonuria and also we have a variants of phenyl ketonurias now the classic phenyl ketonuria is because of defect or deficiency in phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme and because of this phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme deficiency so phenylalanine tends to ele uh, to be elevated now the elevated phenylalanine so it will be diverted into its alternate metabolic fate and that is it can be converted into phenyl acetate phenyl uh, pyruvate phenyl lactate phenyl ethanolamine these are the uh, phenylalanine derivatives most of them are ketone body derivatives of phenylalanine now these ketone body derivatives are soluble in the blood and they'll be filtered by the kidney and they will appear in excess quantities in the urine of phenyl ketonuria patients that is why phenyl uh, name of the disorder is phenyl ketonuria because ketone body derivatives of phenylalanine appearing in the urine one of the ketone body that you really need to remember uh, is phenyl acetate now the phenyl acetate has got that characteristic smell to it and that is the mousy odor or musty odor to the urine or mousy smell or musty smell to the urine and that is because of phenyl acetate in the urine now phenyl ketonuria classic phenyl ketonuria patients so usually they will develop mental retardation and that's because phenylalanine excess phenylalanine passes the blood brain barrier and it do not give chance to other large neutral amino acids like tryptophan tyrosine and branched chain amino acids like valine leucine isoleucine so because of this there can be neurodegeneration in phenylketonuria patients developing into mental retardation now coming with the non classic phenylketonuria so one of the cause for non classic phenylketonuria it is a defect in the synthesis of tetrahydrobiopterin or regeneration of dihydrobiopterin bh2 into tetrahydrobiopterin and the cause for this is defect or mutation in a gene coding for dihydroteridin reductase that is dhpr enzyme now the dihydroteridin reductase enzyme it is it is regenerating bh2 back into bh4 so, so that bh4 is acting as a uh, coenzyme for phenylalanine hydroxylase now the problem with the uh, non classic uh, phenylketonuria which is referred as uh, malignant hyperphenylalaninemia especially with the dhpr defect is uh, there will be deficiency of bh4 and this bh4 it is not only needed for phenylalanine hydroxylase it is also needed for other aromatic amino acid hydroxylases like tyrosine hydroxylase needs bh4 and tyrosine is converted to dopa dopa into dopamine dopamine into epinephrine sorry norepinephrine and then into epinephrine all this process it is happening only if you have sufficient bh4 and that is deficient in uh, uh, dhpr deficiency uh, giving rise to a malignant hyperphenylalaninemia another enzyme that is affected in a malignant hyperphenylalaninemia due to dhpr defect is uh tryptophan hydroxylase now the tryptophan hydroxylase enzyme it is converting tryptophan into 5 hydroxy tryptophan and later this 5 hydroxy tryptophan can go into serotonin which is a neurotransmitter calming neurotransmitter serotonin later it can go into melatonin in pineal gland it means if there is a bh4 deficiency so serotonin and melatonin formation decreases and that is you are going to see in dhpr deficiency giving rise to malignant hyperphenylalaninemia another enzyme that is affected in this particular disorder is nitric oxide synthase nitric oxide synthase which is converting arginine into nitric oxide and that needs bh4 and that enzyme is also affected in non classic phenylketonuria caused by dhpr which we refer it as malignant hyperphenylalaninemia and also in malignant hyperphenylalaninemia so there will be decrease in sorry there will be increase in prolactin formation and that's because in this particular disorder there will be decrease in dopamine synthesis and normally dopamine is acting it will act as an inhibitor of release of prolactin now when there is a deficiency of dopamine so there will be more prolactin released in malignant hyperphenylalaninemia caused by dhpr deficiency
this video has helped you as always thanks for watching and if you have any special requests so you can always comment in the comment section below and if you have any feedback so you are most welcome to write them again in the uh, comments section below thanks again and see you in my next video until then take care